Welcome back to the offensive line. Last week, we started a series talking about the Trinity. Remember that we summed up this doctrine as God eternally existing as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and each person is fully God, and there is one God. If you're confused by that statement, and you probably aren't alone, make sure to watch the video, and if you still have questions, make sure to leave a comment down below on that video. In the second week of the series, we want to talk about God the Father. After establishing that there are three persons in the Trinity, we want to talk about one of them. And you can probably predict that the next two weeks are going to be about God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. But first, God the Father. God the Father is absolutely holy. This is the first attribute we need to talk about because it is really all-encompassing. In Isaiah 6, the prophet Isaiah has a vision of the throne room of God. And we see the angels surrounding the throne singing about his holiness. They aren't singing about his love, his grace, but his holiness. Now, it's difficult to define what it means to be holy. There is so much to it. But primarily, holiness has to do with being separate. It comes from an ancient word that means to cut. In our modern vernacular, we would say that something that is holy is a cut above the rest. But God isn't just different than us. God's holiness means that He is transcendently separate. He is so far above and beyond us that He seems almost totally foreign to us. Not only is He completely foreign to us though, but His holiness also means that He is morally perfect and He is free from blemish. God's holiness is a sum total of all of His attributes. Might even be more accurate to say that His holiness refers to His wholeness. A holy God is holy God. God is also a just God. In our world, justice is in keeping with the law. People who break the law are labeled as criminals and must face judgment. But far above obedience to our government's laws is God's divine law. He sets the standard of righteousness. When people break his standard, they are criminals against a holy God. To break his holy law is to do evil. Keeping his holy law is to do good. So his holy law is the very standard of good and evil because he is the very standard of good and evil. God is holy, just, and is merciful and gracious. While it is true that criminals that break his holy law deserve to be punished, it is also true that God has enacted a way to free us from that punishment. And we know that this way is through Jesus Christ. We'll talk about this more in the next video about God the Son, but suffice to say, God the Father sent God the Son into the world so that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. What we deserve as criminals against holy law is hell. But God in His mercy gives us a way out. Not only that, but God is gracious to give us what we did not deserve, which was eternal life and adoption as His sons. In His mercy, He did not give repentance sinners what they deserved. And in His grace, He gave them what they did not deserve. And finally, He is sovereign. Out of the many attributes of God, His sovereignty might be the one that we have the hardest time with. The Bible says that He predestined us for the adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. So we ask, how does that coincide with free will? Or if we talk about Romans 9.15 where God declares, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. People retort by saying, I believe in the God of love, not the cold, callous God that you're claiming. These questions have a lot to do with our series on theodicy, which you can find here. But for God to be sovereign means that He is in complete control. We know that evil was not created by God, but we see that God is sovereign even over that. And what we see is that God permits evil and evil agents for a time, only to overrule them for His own wise and holy ends. He permits Satan to rule this world for a time, only to finally put him down once and for all. Wait, holiness, justice, mercy, grace, isn't that the gospel? Exactly, that's it. The gospel is the very foundation of what Christians believe. And it is in the gospel that we are able to see all of God's attributes that we talked about in this video. Because God is holy, He has a very high standard of righteousness that we have failed. Because God is just, our crimes against Him need to be punished. Because God is loving and merciful and gracious, He sent His Son to pay for our crime. And finally, in God's sovereignty. 
This was the plan from the very beginning. He is not a God that reacts according to new situations. He is a sovereign God that planned how to redeem his people before the foundation of the world. We hope you were encouraged by this video. Again, this is the heart of what we believe. This is what drives us to do what we do. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions at all. Like this video and subscribe for future ones like it. This is Hanson and Josh with the offensive line teaching you defense to prepare you for the best offense. We'll see you next time. Nice.